your car. I say opposite. You need to race. <laughs> That's a lot of flanges. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Fab Town. Today, we're going to be teaching you guys how to build a collector, whether it's a T3 uh, open or a twin scroll T4 in this case, but you could also apply it to a tw twin scroll T3 as well. And I wanted to do this because this is like the building block to starting a manifold. Sometimes it's the most complex part. Um, I'm going to do my best to film as much of this as I can. I know I tend to breeze over some of this shit, but today I'm going to really try to go in depth. Also, bear with me because my foot is fucking broken and I'm going to be scoot scooting around for this whole video back and forth to the bandsaw. So, hope you guys are ready for that. When you're starting out building your collector, you need to determine what size tubing you're going to be using. And for the most part, most six cylinder manifolds are going to be inch and a quarter. Uh, schedule 10 or schedule 40. It's 304 stainless, which is what I have right here. This is inch and a quarter, 304 stainless pipe. You can get this at most metal depots or uh, suppliers of steel. Some places won't carry that kind of stainless, but look around, you'll find it. I want to do a quick shop update. The Miata. The LMTC Miata has made some leaps and bounds. The subframe is back in. It's all modified and ready to go. The firewall is clearanced. The motor fits in there beautifully. And the motor mount plates have already been cut. So they're mocked up and ready to go. So this thing is gonna be going back into there very soon and have the transmission mounted on. So that's very exciting. I'm sure Laker is gonna be stoked to see that. To the task at hand. First, we have to determine uh, how long we want our collector to be. Now, when I build the collectors, I usually make them a standard length. For instance, I'll show you an example. This is a T3 collector. Don't mind the top. It's been modified a couple times and it's very old, but that runner length is four inches and that four inch runner length gives you or the four inch starting length gives you a good uh, remainder for when you cut the collector down and it leaves a little room to cut off the end when you go to make it fit to the actual flange so let's get those pieces cut down to four inches i'm probably going to speed this up because it's a lot of cutting Okay, so we got our longer piece cut down into these four one foot manageable sections and we're going to go ahead and cut four, one, uh, four four inch pieces all at once. So that'll be pretty bitchin'. Now accuracy on this does not have to be perfect. Um, if they're like a sixteenth off or whatever, not going to make a big difference. You're going to be able to square that up later down the road. Um, I would say get it as accurate as you can get it because it will make your life easier. <laughs> but does not have to be perfect. Okay, so we got our four inch sections all cut up. We got a whole bunch of them here. Next thing we gotta do is we gotta cut the portion off of the four inch section in order to make the merge collector. Now, to do that, it is most preferred to use a jig, a collector jig. In this case, the LPS Fab jig. Now this thing works great, I've had it for years, I highly recommend it. There are other, other ways to make them and uh, other ways to do this, however, this is my preferred method. Okay, so we got the jig installed in the uh, saw. Now I've positioned the blade, if that'll focus, halfway down this tube and there's a reason for that. What you don't want to do is position the saw blade further in and end up cutting your jig. You also don't want to tighten up the distance between the two runners because when you go to weld them out on the tops, they'll be too close together and you won't be able to get in there when actually building your manifold. So you gotta have a little forethought on this stuff. So once you get this thing positioned, don't move it back and forth. Just loosen up the end piece. Now, depending on what jig you're using, like I was saying, uh, you could go about this a bunch of different ways, but this is my go-to way of making these merge collectors.
Okay, now that we got our pieces cut, we're gonna go ahead and fit these up into a four into one on a T3 flange. That's what I'm gonna do for today. I kind of decided while I was cutting these, uh, I flip-flopped around, I know, at the beginning of the video, so I'm sorry. But that's what we're gonna take care of right now. We're gonna tack these up. Uh, once they're tacked, we're gonna clean them the rest of the way and make sure that they fit real good. Uh, get them tacked several times, put them back in the saw, cut them, and fit them to the flange. Blam! Look at that. So I went ahead and cut these flat in the bandsaw after cutting them this way and then welding them up. They look pretty good. Now we're gonna go ahead and fit them to our purge block. This is a key thing that you're gonna to wanna to do. Now you can either make one or buy one like I did. PRL Performance makes a really nice one. And what this does is when you bolt this to this giant aluminum block, this aluminum block acts as a heat sink, pulling all the heat out of this plate, helping to keep it perfectly flat. And that's definitely a key point that you're gonna to want uh, to carry on when you go build, build manifolds. So, warped flanges, no bueno. We're gonna go ahead and take these two pieces that I just welded. Uh, I weld one kind of aligned off to the left slightly so that it leaves us room to weld that one in. Now once you have this weld in here, this one will sit at a slight angle. That's not really a bad thing because if it's sitting off kind of a little bit, a couple degrees off this way, that gives us some, uh, some room to work in here when we go to weld these runners on. Again, always look into the future.